Hello everyone, in this video we will derive the surface area of a sphere. So first let's recap what is a sphere. So a sphere is this object, uh, it's a circular object, so it, you can imagine the middle has a cross section of radius r and then it has a surface like a kind of a ball like this where each point on the surface of the sphere is r units away from it, right? So this is also R, so you can imagine multiple small circles here forming the top half and multiple small circles forming the bottom half. So that's a sphere. So now how do we get the surface area of a sphere? So what we'll do is similar to the volume video where we broke up the sphere into multiple circles, right? So we have a circle here in the middle who, which has a, a radius of R right and it has some very little uh, height here right called let's call this ds and this height is basically around this circle right and this is basically the area over here along its side so you can imagine this cross section over here is a very minuscule strip of area over here with length as ds and as we go up you know we add up the areas of all the strips of all the circles that we see so for example at this point it's going to be this strip over here right and that all together will give us the surface area of a sphere so it's going to be basically the surface area of the sphere is twice times the surface area of the hemisphere, right? And the surface area of the hemisphere is going to be the integral because we're going to add up all of the minuscule things of the circumference of this small circles, 2 pi r sub c. I used r sub c because we already have r here, which is our radius of the entire sphere. So we have r sub c is going to be the radius of this circle that we're going to integrate and times ds so we have the circumference of the circle times ds and that will be basically the area that is covered by a single strip now our next job is to make and obviously we have times 2 here now our next job is to make rc and ds expressed in terms of the same thing so we have two options but let me draw the cross section real quick so if you have the cross section over here, here we have R, here we have this semicircle, right, and this is, this is R, and this arc length of the semicircle is S, right? Now we have two options, either we can integrate with respect to S, where we integrate everything from the arc length 0 to the arc length, this will be 2 pi r over 4, right? Because 2 pi r is the entire circumference of the circle, and this is just one fourth of the circle, so this is 2 pi r over 4. So we can integrate from 0 to 2 pi r over 4, but if we do that, you know, it, it'll get complicated if we want to express r in terms of s. So what we'll do instead is we'll integrate with respect to d theta. So let's say we have some angle here d theta right and this is ds so imagine this is a very small arc length and this is d theta right so what we're going to do is instead of integrating from 0 to the circumference what we're going to do is integrate from 0 in terms of the angle theta to 90 degrees right so we'll express this as an integral again two times from here 0 to 90 degrees Right now, at each theta, what is our radius? Right, so the the radius here, r sub c, is going to be this length over here because this is the circle that we're going to compute. Right, so and this we have this completing the rectangular. This over here is also r sub c, and this is going to be theta. So we know that. So drawing that triangle again, we have here, th this is r because this is from the center to the surface of the sphere. This is r sub c 
because this is the radius of the circle we want and this is theta. So in order to express r sub c in terms of theta, we have r sub c is equal to r cosine of theta, right? Because r here is a constant because that's the radius of the entire sphere and that's r sub c. So we can write here 2 pi r sub c is r cosine theta. Now, how do we get ds? Right, so ds is the arc length given by theta. So now we know that the entire arc length of the whole circle is 2 pi r, right? Because that's the circumference. But now we only want the arc length of d theta, right? So you know, similar to earlier where if we have a 90 degree arc, we, we just divide it 2 by r by 4 because it's, you know, it's 90 degrees. So basically the arc length is proportional to the angle, right? So what proportion of 360 degrees is d theta? So that's just going to be d theta over 360 degrees, right? So that will be equal to our ds. So now over here, instead of ds, we're going to just write this, which is basically just going to be 2 pi r, r again is the radius of the entire sphere, all over 360 degrees, right, because this is just a division, and then times d theta. So that's d theta over here. And so now we can just integrate this. So first let's simplify. So 2 times 2 pi r is 4 pi r. 4 pi r times 2 pi r is 8 pi squared r squared. And in the denominator, we have 360 degrees. So 360 degrees is basically 2 pi radians, right? So we need to convert it to radians so we can remove the units. And inside the integral, we have the left the integral from 0 to 90 degrees of cos theta d theta and the integral of cos theta is sine theta so again simplifying this side we have here left 4 pi r squared and then integral of cos theta is sine theta so we have sine theta from evaluated from 0 to 90 degrees and then sine 90 degrees is 1 and sine 0 is 0. So evaluating this integral from 0 to 90 gives us this. So that's just basically 4 pi r squared. So therefore, the surface area of the sphere is 4 pi r squared. So that's all. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.